So now that you've got Xcode downloaded and up and running, we're going to take you on a walkthrough of the Xcode software. You can view this as a guided tour of the grand world of Xcode. We're going to be showing you some of the most common panes that we'll be using, as well as some of the buttons and toggles and some hints and tips as well. So when you open up one of your projects, or if you build a new project, this is usually what you will be looking at. And this is the Xcode software. So we're going to go from top to bottom and walk through some of the most important parts in the interface. So firstly, let's take a look at the top bar over here. Now you'll notice that a lot of Mac software has very similar interfaces and Xcode in this top bar actually looks pretty similar to iTunes. Um, so over here, you've got the play button, which which is, which is where you tap to build and run your project. And this will build it either in the simulator or in an actual device. And then you can press stop to stop running your app. And over here, you can select what you want to run. So at the moment, we've got the Xcode walkthrough iOS app selected. Um, but you can also select different targets if you have them. So here I've just added a watch, um, Apple Watch target for the same project, as well as an Apple Watch notification target. So depending on what you select, it will run different projects. So now once you've got that selected, you can change where you want it to be run. So if you have a physical device connected, it'll show up over here. It'll say something like Angela's iPhone or James's iPhone or whatever it is that you named your uh, physical device. And down here you can select the simulators. So the virtual phones um, on which you can run your app. So we'll just keep it selected as iPhone SE for now. Now over here, you've got the status bar. So occasionally over here, you'll see messages like building in progress or um, app is already running or um, downloading symbol files, etc. This is basically where Xcode is trying to give you an update on what's happening behind the scenes, what it's doing. So now let's move over to the right. We've got these three buttons and you can see this is a this is a square with a dash on the left and this hides and shows the navigator pane. So this is this left side pane over here. And similarly, this one with the, with the line at the bottom shows and toggles the debug panel. And this one you've got toggles the utility pane open and close. So these three buttons are all toggles and depending on what you're doing, sometimes maybe you're designing, sometimes maybe you're coding, you may need to use these toggles to give yourself a bit more screen real estate, especially if you have a small, you know, 11 inch or 13 inch MacBook. Um, it can be invaluable to try and give, your give yourself a bit more space to work with. Um, now let's pop back these panes and talk through the leftmost. So the navigator pane. Now, again, these have quite a few tabs associated in this pane, but the most important one that you'll be using most of the time is this one, which is the project navigator. Now in here, you'll see all the files in your project. So for example, your design file or your code file. Um, so main.storyboard storyboard or any of these yellow icon uh, files are all design files. And this is where you can see the canvas of your app design. And here you'll be able to find your code. So the most important part of this pane is going to be the project navigator. But some of the other parts I'm just going to touch upon. For example, here you can find text that is contained within your uh, project. So you might be looking for a particular method, a particular function, some sort of variable name, anything you want, you search for it over here. And in this, you've got the errors that could happen in your app. So when you have a bug or when you have a problem and with Xcode 8, one of the differences um, for those of you guys who've seen previous versions of Xcode is now the error section shows build time errors as well as runtime errors, which can be really useful. And we're going to dive into that when we're doing some of the debugging sessions. Um, and finally, you've got some of your breakpoints. So you can form breakpoints by just tapping anywhere in the margin. And this is something that people actually do by mistake quite frequently. Sometimes, you know, you're just clicking around and accidentally you click in the margin and form a breakpoint. So what are breakpoints? Essentially, the computer runs the code from top to bottom. And once it encounters a breakpoint, it stops 
at that line and stops running. And you might mistakenly think that, oh, my app has crashed, but actually all that you've done is just you've mistakenly inserted a breakpoint. So if you want to get rid of the breakpoints, there's two ways of doing this. You can click on it again to make it a light sort of blue, make it inactive, or you can actually just click and drag it away and it disappears in a puff of smoke. So let's get rid of those breakpoints and breakpoints are really useful again for debugging and we'll show you some of these tools and some of these um, uses when we're doing the debugging sessions. Okay, cool. So enough about the navigator pane. Let's move on to the central pane. So this is where your editor lies. So this is where you edit your code or if you've got the design file open, this is where you design your screen. And you can zoom in and zoom out by using pinch on your um, trackboard. And over here, we can see another file structure. Now, this is the structure for all of the uh, UI elements, so the user interface elements on your canvas. So if you view this as your canvas, say if I just drag on something like a switch or like a, I don't know, like a slider, I'm not really doing anything with these things, but I'm just showing you that over here, you can see the hierarchy of all the things are on screen, which can be useful sometimes. But if you again need more uh, screen real estate, you can actually hide the document outline by clicking this tiny button over here. It's really well hidden. Um, and if you can just pop that pane away. So let's talk about another new thing that's um, that's come to Xcode 8. It is this little section down here. So what this allows you to do is allows you to change the device for your canvas. So at the moment I've got iPhone 6S selected. I can switch it down to a four inch iPhone SE screen or even an iPhone 4 screen and I can change its orientation quite quickly. And this allows you to view what your design would look like um, in the different states, right? So for example, even though here I've got my little, uh, um, my toggle and my slider, but when I go to landscape, you'll see that my slider is actually gone. So in some of our um, design talks, um, some of our design lectures, we're gonna be talking about auto layout and setting constraints. So we're gonna be setting rules for these um, elements to always appear the way that we want it to, no matter which orientation or which size device. So that's all to come. I'm just gonna get rid of these quickly and I'm gonna show you something else. Say over here, we have what's called a view controller. And this you can essentially regard as just one of your screens inside your app. I'm just gonna give it a purple background color and I'm gonna drag on another view controller. So now I have a app with two screens, one with a purple screen, one with a green screen. So now these are individual screens within the app. So say if I had, you know, a seven minute workout, it might go from purple for squats. And once you've done those squats, you can move the user to the next screen, which could be, you know, for push-ups or whatever. And this is a really easy way of creating new screens essentially. And we're gonna be diving into that a lot deeper as well. So I've already shown you how I can drag various things onto the design page by using the object library over here. Now this section has again four different panes and most of the time you'll see me just being inside this one which is the object library and in here you can search for various things for example let's search for a button and out comes a button and we can just drag it onto our design and look there it is we've created a button so some of these user interface element um, aspects are actually quite easily managed by the object library and we're going to be doing a lot of that design when we're making our apps so what else is inside this right side paint well you've also got this upper section here and there's again various tabs but most of the time you'll be inside this which is the attribute inspector now this allows you to set the properties on whatever it is that you've selected over here so for example if i had a button over here and i select the button either inside the document outline or just simply on the canvas i can actually set its properties for example i can change the text color change it to green I can uh, change its shadow color to 
brown. I can um, do other things like give it a give the button a actual background, so it's it's a solid color bat a button. Um, I can do various things. So these are the properties that you can set. And then the other one that you'll be using is this ruler icon. And this is where you set the size of your user interface elements. So for example, you can set where um, where its position should be, where it should start, where it should end, what size it should be, where it should be tagged in the screen, etc. And we're going to ex be exploring all of that and more in the coming tutorials. So this is just a very brief introduction to the various sections. So let's get rid of that button. And again, you know, if you need more screen space, you can actually toggle this to get rid of it by clicking here. And Another part of this pane that's really useful is the zoom in to zoom out. So you can just click on the plus or minus, or you can right click on some white space inside the design file and zoom to a particular level. Um, or you can just use the pinch to zoom on your trackpad as well. Now, the final section I'm going to talk about is this bottom part, and this is the debug pane, you, you can, which you can close and open by using this button. And in here, we'll find all of the messages um, that will allow us to debug our app. So when we have an error or when we have a problem, when we have a bug, this is a section that we're going to be diving into to try and figure out what that bug is and how we can fix it. So that's pretty much a whistle stop tour of the Xcode interface. Now, don't worry if there were some things covered in there that hasn't immediately made sense because we're going to be covering all of this when we're making the apps anyways. This is pretty much just an overview of the various sections within Xcode so that when I mention, you know, go to the navigate pane or go to the attributes inspector, you can go and find it pretty easily. Now, we've actually made a map of Xcode with some of those names like navigate pane or debug pane um, in a downloadable PDF, which you'll be able to find below this lecture. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to be covering another aspect of Xcode, which is Xcode Playgrounds. And this is a software that we'll use to learn Swift and understand some of the um, programming concepts. So we'll see you on the next lesson.